Hello everybody and welcome to Wesley's Plant World with me Wesley Peterson and today I want to do a video all about the beautiful plants that I have in these two terracotta pots in front of me here. This plant is known as Pulsatilla vulgaris otherwise known as Pasque flower. This plant is one of the earliest herbaceous perennials to start coming up and blooming in your garden and it's so fabulous comes up at the same time as crocuses and daffodils and things like that and it gives a huge display of beautiful and big flowers for the size of the plants i think these plants are in the ranunculaceae family there are around 30 different species in the genus Pulsatilla. And the most popular garden plant is the European Pasque flower, Pulsatilla vulgaris. And well, that is what I have in front of me, as well as a variety that I've managed to get at the same time, which was quite lucky. And I really hope I can find myself a few different species and varieties of this plant because they are really, really beautiful. These plants are very closely related to the Anemone family and they were actually once called Anemone pulsatilla. And they are sometimes still listed under that name, but they are not, they are pulsatilla. Other common names for this plant that you may know them by are windflower, meadow anemone, or Easter flower. So Pulsatilla vulgaris is native from central to northern continental Europe, as well as here in Sweden. And it's quite a hardy plant. It can take minus temperatures and it can live out in your garden in Sweden, Europe, or anywhere where well, it can get down to minus 15 degrees or so where I live and these are absolutely fine in pots or in the ground and they will come up and up again every single year as perennials and they will grow into larger and larger clumps as well. So you'll get more of these beautiful leaves and these rosettes of flowers. And right now in these two pots in front of me, I actually have five pots that I bought and I'm expecting these pots to fill out with these beautiful plants. And I wanted them on their own as statement plants because I've seen them around and about for a while in different garden centers and I've never got around to getting myself some until now. So I'm really, really pleased about this and that's why I wanted to keep them on their own in these pots so that I can really appreciate everything about them. There's just one thing you need to remember about these plants and that is they are toxic. So don't go just eating them or anything like that and keep them away from young children and so forth. But these plants have actually been used medicinally for many different ailments if used correctly. So you will see these in different health shops and so forth as a kind of medical treatment. But the plant itself in its fresh form like this is poisonous. So don't go out munching on this plant in this state. <laughs> so this plant has a thick and fibrous wood stock that gets woodier with time. And these plants can, as they mature, be divided into separate plants. And as I said, these plants produce their flowers and a few leaves, but it's first when the flowers start fading away and the plant has produced its seed head that it starts bringing up more and more leaves and filling out that way. So this beautiful little plant changes its character through the season. So these leaves are pinnate and they are cleft at the bottom and they can grow to between 10 and 12 inches tall and the whole plant being covered in these beautiful fine silvery hairs make the plant shimmer and shine whenever they catch any of the light and they just look dreamlike and gorgeous i just think they're amazing to look at and this silver hair carries on up through the stems into the petioles underneath the flower petals all over the plant it's just gorgeous and then look at the huge center part on the flowers where they have all their nectar and pollen growing out. It's absolutely beautiful. This is really a stunning little plant. So I just wanted to put some full screen video in here of this beautiful plant so we can get in even closer and look at these gorgeous flowers. Look at this. from every side 
they're just magical. I love the leaves on these plants. Look at that. The collar on the stem. And look here. And down here as they unfurl, they're just so pretty. Then look at these leaves at the bottom with a slightly different character to them. My two beautiful pots. Look at this. Look at these beautiful flowers. They're just amazing right now. Look at these ones just about to unfurl. This lovely flower here. All the silver dusting. Look at them blowing in the wind. <laughs> they make me so happy. And then if we look from the other side, you can see the one here that has a slightly different color. Look at the shade of burgundy mauve. This flower from the back side, this one down here. All those gorgeous leaves. Look down here. Two different colors and you can see it quite clearly here. Isn't that just gorgeous? Now you can expect that the leaves on this plant will stay nice and fresh for most of the summer, but towards late summer, then the leaves will start dying off as well. Because remember, this is an early starter. And these flowers that can be up to one and a half inches are absolutely beautiful and they come up on one single stalk so they really stand out with a beautiful collar around the middle it's just so different to look at and one interesting thing about this plant is that these purple septals produce a non-permanent dye and that dye was used to decorate and dye Easter eggs. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I think that is really interesting. <laughs> These plants now, as I said, there are many different cultivars and variety species and the most common is the purple, but you can find them in all sorts of shades of purple and mauves and even red, dark burgundy, all the way to white. So there's a different color for everyone's taste. And I really hope I'm gonna be able to find all of them with time. And going back to saying when these plants produce their seed heads, it's absolutely amazing. They produce spherical type seed heads and they're really pompous and pampy, I think. And they can be sown to produce new plants as well. So they can self seed when they're out in nature or out in your garden, which is absolutely wonderful. But they are slow growing and it would take them some time to reach a mature state, probably around four years, to be able to fill up maybe a pot like this. And the seeds are so light that they get dispersed by the wind. So this plant, even though I did say earlier, you can go and split it as a mature plant, it really doesn't like its root ball to be disturbed at all. So, the best thing to do would be just to go out and buy yourself a plant that's already in a pot and transplant it into your garden or into pots like I've done here and leave the plant to grow out and fill out itself without disturbing it because you could risk losing both parts of your plant if you split it even though it can be done but it really really doesn't tolerate root disturbance well once it's established somewhere this plant loves to be in a well-draining soil. So you can use a kind of soil that is free draining where you add sand or grit to a soil and make it much more chunky that way. And that's what I've done here. I've used a gardening mix and I've put a lot of sand in there. And on top of the soil, I have liquor balls and my plants are just absolutely loving this situation. They're also in a terracotta pot so that 
when I water them, they can stay moist, but the water can wick out and they're not sitting in any water or bogged down in any way. And these plants, when you plant them, they really do not like to be planted too deep down in the pot. So when you buy them, it's very important that you plant them at exactly the same height as they were in their nursery pot. Don't go any lower than that. They don't want to be smothered. They need oxygen to be able to get to their roots. But if you really are in a situation where you have maybe some of this plant and you want to move it, then what you should do to help the plant is go and prune off all of the flower buds so that you only have the leaves left, transplant your plant and it should produce more flowers of its own accord within a couple of weeks. Another good thing about this plant is it is drought tolerant so you don't have to go and water it constantly if you have it in a garden situation. Obviously in a pot things are different. Plants especially in the terracotta pot dry out much quicker so I go and water these every couple of days or so and I want to keep these in pots for another reason and that is deer do like to eat this beautiful precious little plant so if I should plant these out in my garden at Crystal Cottage <laughs> they would be gone in a couple of days and I would not get to see any of this beauty so I'm keeping them here at my outdoor terrace garden where there are no animals that are going to munch them and I get to see this whole display for as long as it lasts and that should be a couple of months yet. So another reason why I wanted to make this video and highlight this beautiful Pulsatilla vulgaris is because this year 2023 this plant has been given the title the perennial of the year and I really think it deserves that title. I really think it deserves some focus and attention because it's a very rare plant actually. And in the wild here in Sweden, this plant is 100% protected. It is illegal to remove this plant from any area, split this plant, cut this plant, damage this plant, remove roots, remove seeds, damage seeds, nothing. You may not touch this plant if it is seen growing out in the wild in Sweden because it is very, very rare and endangered. And that's why it's so wonderful that we can actually find this plant now in plant centers with cultivars and varieties that have been produced for us to be able to go and buy them and appreciate them in the shops. But if you are in Sweden and many places in Europe, this plant may not be removed or touched in the wild so please remember that and that is why i'm appreciating these plants even more because they are a delicacy so if you're actually one of those people that likes rockeries and things like that this is another one of those plants that would be perfect for that because here in sweden this plant grows very often on rocky and gravelly kind of substrates and it does very well in those kinds of situations so yeah that's perfect for this plant but what could be better than being able to go and buy this plant that is red listed and have a close good look at it and enjoy it and know you're doing your part to keep this plant going even if it is in cultivation and if I'm ever out anywhere where I get to see this plant in the wild I will be absolutely amazed because I've never seen that so far. So it's that rare. But anyway, I just wanted to make this video because I just think this plant is so beautiful. Its characteristics are so amazing. It's got such an amazing style and shape. And the fact that it is endemic to Sweden and other places in Europe makes me very happy. And I've seen that many other countries have started getting roots delivered to them in the post and have started planting these out in different areas for example in America where this plant isn't native but it's not a plant that will become an invasive species so it's wonderful to be able to have these in different places around the world as well. So I really hope you enjoyed this video about this wonderful plant and looking at all the pictures that I've had going on next to me the whole time while I've been talking so that you can see these wonderful flowers and the stems and the leaves and everything that's going on with these flowers in these pots and that you've been inspired to maybe go out and try and find yourself your own little pots or garden plants pulsatilla vulgaris because it really is a beautiful added touch to any situation. So that is all I have about this year's perennial plant 2023 here in Sweden, this beautiful, rare and endangered species, the Pulsatilla vulgaris. 
So please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.